In this video, you will learn how the relationship between pH and pKa affect the speciation in a reaction mixture. Speciation means the type of species, or molecules, present in a reaction. Most of the time, when we've been talking about acid-base reactions, we've just imagined there's been a single acid and a single base in the solution. In reality, there are thousands of molecules present. In an acid-base context, we can consider mixtures of conjugate acids and bases. In the last video, you learned how to analyze the solvent's role in acid-base chemistry. We take that concept a step further in this video and analyze the effect of a solution's pH. Depending on the solution's pH, different concentrations of species can be present. We need to get the definitions of pKa and pH straight before we proceed. Which statement is correct? pKa is a value that quantifies the acidity of a proton in a molecule. pH is a value that reports the concentration of protons in a solution. Let's look at the example of a carboxylic acid. The solvent can act as a base, an acid, and take on other roles. Here we are focusing on acid-base chemistry only. If the carboxylic acid acts as an acid, it will protonate the solvent and give the carboxylate shown. If the carboxylic acid acts as a base, it will deprotonate the solvent and give the oxonium shown. These two equilibria show the three species that can exist in the solution. Our goal is to determine the predominant species of this carboxylic acid at a pH of 7. What's your prediction? Before we jump right to the answer, you'll learn how to figure this out. The Henderson-Hasselbalch equation describes the relationship between pH and pKa. Professor Delanchin at the University of New Brunswick developed a simulation to help us understand this equation. You can access this simulation in the resources section of this site. The equation itself is at the top right. The bottom middle section has pH and pKa sliders. The top left shows the relative concentration of the acid and its conjugate base. We can change the form of the acid and conjugate base by using the toggle in the bottom right corner. As we change the pH and pKa values with the sliders, the values in the equation change accordingly, and the concentrations of the acid and conjugate base change accordingly. pH and pKa are on a logarithmic scale. What is the impact of a one unit difference between pH and pKa on the relative concentrations of the acid and conjugate base? What is the impact of a two unit difference? What about three units? A one unit difference between pH and pKa results in a 10 to 1 ratio between the acid and conjugate base. A two unit difference between pH and pKa results in a 100 to 1 ratio between acid and conjugate base. A three unit pKa difference between pH and pKa results in a 1000 to 1 ratio between the acid and conjugate base. When the pH of the solution is less than the pKa value of the acid, the acid is the major species. When the pH of the solution is greater than the pKa value of the acid, the conjugate base is the major species. When pH is equal to pKa, there is 50% of the acid, 50% of the conjugate base. Now let's get back to our example. In the first equilibrium, the carboxylic acid has the role of an acid. Its pKa value is approximately 5. We return to the simulation and adjust the sliders to reflect our data, pH of 7 and pKa value of 5. Because the pH of the solution is greater than the pKa value of the acid, the conjugate base form is the major one at equilibrium. One way to think of this is the solution is more basic than what the substrate can handle, so it exists in its conjugate base form. It's unfortunate that we learn that pH 7 is neutral. This is true in only very limited situations. It does not mean the species will necessarily be neutral at this pH. The charge on a species will depend on its pKa value. Now let's look at the second equilibrium. Identify the roles of each of the species. Which species is major? In the second equilibrium, the carboxylic acid has the role of a base a conjugate base of the exonium as drawn here. The exonium is the acid, and it has a pKa value of approximately minus 7. The pH is much greater than the pKa, so the conjugate base form is major at equilibrium. 
how do we put all this together? Consider what would happen if the protonated carboxylic acid were introduced into a solution. It would be converted into the carboxylic acid with the equilibrium favoring the carboxylic acid. The carboxylic acid in turn would react to form the carboxylate with the equilibrium favoring that anionic form. Otherwise said, the equilibria funnel toward the carboxylate form. That is the major form at equilibrium. Take a few minutes to review this first half of the video and answer some questions. What if there's more than one functional group in the molecule? Amino acids are a classic example of having two or more functional groups. What would the major species of glycine be at pH 7.4, the pH of blood? The nine possibilities are shown on screen. Which one is correct? The key is to analyze each functional group independently. Let's figure it out step by step. A key idea here is that compounds can have multiple charges, which can be the same, such as two or more negative charges, or different, such as a positive and a negative charge. In the last example, we figured out that a carboxylic acid would be in the carboxylate form at pH 7. There's no meaningful change in speciation at pH 7.4. Now for the amine. First, draw out the two possible equilibria. What is the role of the amine in each equilibrium? The amine is the acid in the top equilibrium, and it is the base in the bottom equilibrium. Which pKa values should we use for each equilibrium? Find the pKa value of the acidic species in each case. For the top equilibrium, the acid's pKa value is approximately 38. The pH is much less than the pKa value, meaning this equilibrium favors the acid, the amine. For the bottom equilibrium, the acid's pKa value is approximately 10, the value for the ammonium. The pH is again less than the pKa value, so this equilibrium favors the acid side. To determine the final answer, imagine what would happen if each species were placed in the solution. We know the carboxylate form is the major form of the carboxylic acid, so we incorporate that right away into our answer. Put the amide in solution and the equilibrium favors the amine. As molecules of the amine form, they start reacting with solvent to form the ammonium. That second reaction's equilibrium favors the ammonium form. All the molecules are funneling toward the ammonium form, the major species at pH 7.4. We put these two analyses together to give the final species, which has an ammonium and a carboxylate. If you look at many textbooks, you'll see amino acids written in this Zwitter ionic form, the form with two opposite charges. That's because it's the major form of amino acids at physiological pH. In this video, you learn to interpret the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to predict the speciation of molecules at different pH values. To do this, we analyze the relationship between pH and pKa using a simulation and some specific examples. If the pH was lower than the pKa value of the acid in an equilibrium, the acid form was the major species. If the pH was higher than the pKa value of the acid, the conjugate base was the major species. If the pH was equal to the pKa value of the acid, equal amounts of the acid and conjugate base would be found in solution. If you would like to explore the simulation on your own, you can find it in the resources section. Good luck!